just got notification on my droid app that we have tied to our GPS tracking system notifies us when the devices have pre-programmed scripts that we put in place like geofences and uh, takeoff or stops things like that you can set a whole bunch of parameters to be notified about on this particular case the vehicle was in a garage the garage door wouldn't close down because the truck was so big so what they did is they put a boat in the driveway to block it in and a bunch of other stuff around it and then they had a truck out on the street that blocked the boat in so there never was a real opportunity to be able to repossess the truck but we could walk right up to it so it was an ideal situation to put a tracking device on so I mounted the tracking device a few days ago and programmed in there that if it goes outside of the neighborhood basically to notify me and I got that notification and I watched the vehicle and it drove all the way up into uh, Stansbury Park which is up by Twilla that's a uh, wheels neck of the woods but he doesn't keep his truck up there so it looks like I'm gonna have to head up there and get this truck picked up while it's out of the garage I actually believe Will's at the his second job tonight he works at the uh, army base as a military police he's got a second job like I do where I you know I do the safety and security thing up at Sundance he does the military police thing at the army base Hello? Let's see if he calls back. It's always a shot in the dark that he's available and has his truck, but most likely not going to be the case. boom down just a little bit to clear that yep so we're gonna see this vehicle is a Dodge 2500 it didn't have any kind of special lift or anything so it should be pretty straightforward the only unknowns we have is how is it parked where it sits right now and will it sit there the whole time until we get there we're good 45 minutes away from its current location we got to go the back way through Lehigh and around the mountain and come in through Tooele up through into Stansbury the only other way to get there is to go all the way up into Salt Lake hit the I-80 and go west towards Wendover and then go drop into Stansbury that way but since we're coming from Utah County I'll go the back way from Lehigh During the day, it's actually kind of a fun run because you go through these little canyon mountain paths. It's just more scenic than just driving on the freeway. This guy used to be a repo man, worked for uh, one of my competitors up in Salt Lake. And uh, I don't know how long or what the ending story was there, but I just was given information that he has background as a recovery agent which of course explains why he was you know putting it in a garage and blocking it in with a boat and doing everything he could to make it difficult for a recovery company to get gain access to it this vehicle is actually not even registered in his name and he's not even on the loan it's uh, in his wife's name and she has a loan with an, uh, a lender that one of my buddies does the repos for and uh, there's a lot of special circumstances around this assignment that I can't divulge in this video in the off event that he were to watch this video there's a lot of things I wouldn't want him to be aware of or to know that led up to this repossession but basically what it comes down to is we need to get this vehicle recovered for the uh, owner of the vehicle. Uh, she has not had much luck. 
uh, negotiating it on her own. I guess they're in the process of a divorce, which, you know, those are always ugly. Those private party impounds and private party repos, most repossession companies won't touch them because of the liability and end up in a really bad situation real fast if you don't, you know, I've, I've said this before and I'm a broken record about it, you got to make sure that you verify everything that the person who's hiring you has told you, 10 ways to Sunday, because if they've misrepresented anything whatsoever, uh, we pay the ultimate price. There's actually a discussion right now on my YouTube channel, that last video that I uploaded about picking up the heavy beasts. I got that excursion and I got that 2500 that we ended up having to take back because of the lien release and the screw up with the uh, lender's store and the subsequent firing of the employee that didn't uh, do their job. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of good comments on there, a lot of people asking questions about, you know, would... Matt or his certified asset recovery, his company, be liable for a wrongful repossession. And we would, could be sued. I guarantee you that they would name us in the claim. Uh, it's standard procedure to name everybody you can that you know that was involved, which definitely includes the repo company because we were the ones that were taking the vehicle. And then from there, they named the finance company and then gone down the line until they get into individuals' names. And what we do is we have to pay an attorney to request to have us removed from the uh, case, our name from the uh, complaint, once we're able to prove that, look, we were operating off of this documentation that was provided to us, this is what we did to ensure that what we were told was legitimate, and they had no reason to believe otherwise, that we didn't have the rights to go out and pick up that collateral. And so if it turns out that it was a mistake that the finance company made and the judge can see that, then ultimately that's the person that's, or the party that's gonna bear the full brunt of any kind of, uh, of a suit, uh, judgment or anything like that. And just because they get a judgment doesn't mean they get paid. It just means they now have a court order saying that they are ordered to pay back said judgment. But there's ways that people, even after they get lose and get judgments in court, there's, I know collection agencies that have millions of dollars of uncollected judgments. People they can't find, people that have no money, they have no assets, uh, and it's just it, and they just fall to the wayside because you know they just bigger fish to fry. They don't have time to go after every single little one. So going to court's costly, only from the side of having to pay an attorney for the most part to defend you. That's one of the reasons why I like the video. The video really. It's just clear cut on, you know, I, that's why I do as much audio commentating as I can in the videos and explain what I think needs to be explained so that it can be, you know, later analyzed my train of thought and my processes and what it was, what was my justification for this or for that. And it just helps. And whenever I get a call from an attorney saying, hey, we've got a client that says that you picked up their vehicle and now there's this damage. You know, we go back and we, we review the video and the damage wasn't there when we released the vehicle back to them, which means it happened after they picked it up from us. We just tell their attorney, you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna say the damage isn't there, but what I can say is while it was in our possession, we didn't cause it. And uh, we have the video documentation proof to provide to show that. And usually just a, a quick upload to a private server with a, a private link for the attorney to take a look at and they review that video and they realize that with that kind of documentation there's never going to be a court case and so then the attorney goes back to the client and says look we're not going to take and waste your time filing in the court of law when these people have pretty irreputable proof that they didn't cause the damage and the situation goes away and I can pay my, my attorney a couple hundred dollars to make a few phone calls and maybe send out a couple of uh, cease and desist letters as opposed to having to ha pay him to go to uh, court. Because when you go to court, it, the numbers jump up exponentially what you have to pay your attorney. So, videos really worked out.
from that aspect and was that's the primary reason why I even started doing the video side of this was to avoid litigation and the YouTube channel just kind of is a sideline thing that evolved from it you guys have no idea how much footage never even that never even makes it to the light of day I've got terabytes full of vaults of videos of the some of the craziest stuff and someday maybe if I get out of this line of work or I'm not at risk of being sued for that footage I thought about putting together a best of DVD or something or a digital download off the internet of the craziest stuff that I ever dealt with right now all I can put up there is the sterile stuff that keeps me out of court we'll get gassed up here and hit the road we'll get ourselves a quad Dodge 2008 2500 this guy is gonna be freaking pissed I told her too I warned the owner you're gonna get a barrage of emails and texts and phone calls as soon as this truck comes up missing and just kind of preparing her for that at first she was like you know I really don't want to, him to know that I was involved with this and I said he's gonna figure it out in about two seconds it's not gonna take the guy much time at all to figure out who came and got the truck especially I guess she tried to get it one time previously on her own with the police and the police came out and said if you let him take it willfully and he didn't steal it from you even if he is your ex-husband we can't do anything about it he didn't steal the vehicle from you you let him you, you gave him access to it and basically she left there without the truck and realized at that point that she had a few other options talked with a friend of a friend who called me and said hey how could you help in this situation that's where we're at. About halfway there, going around the back side of uh, West Mountain, between Lehigh and Tooele. And uh, we're just pinging the device again to make sure that it hasn't left. The information we have is there's some people that he parties with on weekends, and when he parties there, he usually stays the night, gets drunk, and he's spends the whole night there, so that would, that would be the best case scenario for us that this isn't just a, someone that he's stopping off to as a pit stop, a long run of uh, stops he's going to make tonight, so I'm not getting a signal back, which means I probably don't have the internet back here. Some dead spots back here. Yeah, I got like one bar on my phone. Well, my air card probably is not going to be hitting a tower. As soon as I clear this next bend, drop down through a gully, and then when we climb back out of that, yeah, I get cell service again, and then I'll ping it again from there. And from there, we just got to come in the back way into Tooele, all the way through the main drag strip of Tooele, get out of town of Tooele, and then the next town after that is Stansbury Park, and that's the small subdivision that he's parked in. What I'm going to want to do is uh, sit back and park a distance away and approach on foot, make sure that the party isn't happening out front, make sure that the truck's not occupied, is locked in, you know, accessible, and look at my entry and escape routes. We're going to want to try to execute this as quietly and as plainly as we possibly can. The uh, person giving us the information on this assignment also informed us that he has an AR-15 assault rifle that he carries in the truck and so that's one thing that's on the top of my concern list. I want to make sure that we don't allow him access to the inside of the truck um, before he gives us a key if it goes down that route. So we'll be here in about 25 minutes. So we can get ourselves this Dodge truck picked up. light. Got my GoPro on the head. The hands-free headlamp below it. Got a 
highway patrolman turning in before us. Leave it right away. Got it unlocked. The wheel is locked in the position it's in. So we'll see how much we pitch out to the side as we leave the neighborhood here. If I'm too far over to one side, I'll have to throw the steel rails on the front. I have no idea which one of these houses he's at. I could take an educated guess by where he was parked, but. <sighs> Looks like it's trailing pretty good. It's going to be close. It's one of the advantages of the steel rails is they're longer. So in situations like this where we've got the wheels turned at the widest point, you run out of room. The aluminum rails wouldn't even make it this far. And push right up against that edge there. Should work. The person that uh, contracted us to pick this truck up for them, the owner of it, also warned us that he might have an AR-15 inside the truck. And being that he used to be a repo man, I figured he might have a couple other gadgets in here as well. And I was right. It's got a long reach tool for doing lockouts. And he's got his AR-15. We found an extra magazine for this gun. There's one in there loaded along with the weapon. like that so we'll get the serial number off the gun make sure that goes into our report and inventory and if he wants his weapon back we'll drop it off at the local police station and uh, check it in with them and then he can come show ID Proof of ownership and check it out. That's the spare clip right there. Make sure that stays in the truck with the gun. I did find ammunition for a pistol as well. I've not located a pistol. Jumper cables, Gatorade. Yeah, I don't see any other gun carriers. Get the flock out of here. Didn't even make it halfway through town. And I heard a pss, like a tire popping and then I saw a white puff of smoke. <coughs> Pulled over as quick as I could. Luckily I wasn't going very fast. 
like I'm walking back here to investigate. I smoked a dolly tire. Good thing I started carrying a spare. So we're not stuck here. Take the tension off of the rails. for the unexpected. That's for sure. Since I have air on the truck, I need to get me a air impact wrench. Stuff like this, I can just burp, burp, burp. change the tire in seconds. Work smarter, not harder. Get these loose enough. Tension off. That was a catastrophic failure. Leaving town, take two. Well, I just had another freaking tire go out, another dolly. I see it throwing sparks right there on the side. Grinding right on the rim. I didn't even make it another freaking 10 miles. I heard the pop. I freaking looked back and saw sparks. So, I don't have another spare. My only option now is to put the dollies away. I have to tow this thing the rest of the way in. Crooked. Good grief. This truck does not want to be repossessed. Of this truck is just too heavy for these tires. That rim's gone. I'm gonna need a whole new rim on that one. Luckily, I've got a spare rim at home. That rim's toast. Alright, so drop the dollies completely, unload this thing, put the rails away, and go to option C. One of those reasons why you have to always double check and triple check your equipment before you go out on the road. I knew my dollies were getting involved, but I would have never guessed they were gonna, I'd lose two in one night. There's just no way to count for that kind of unfortunate luck. 
come Monday morning, I'll be down at the tire shop getting four new tires. Five, including the spare. Get a new one on the spare while we're at it. We like to use the comp derated tires. That rim is, that rim is toast. Scrap metal. Nothing I could do about it, I was right in the middle of the highway. I had to roll as far as I could. Sometimes it costs you a rim to do it. Fun night, fun night. The trick is to not lose your cool and just take it all in stride. Laugh it off. What else can you do? I'm not even gonna bother putting my covers back on them. After a closer inspection, I'm seeing bulges in this tire. This one was next. Sidewall was getting ready to give out on it too. So yeah, I'm gonna get five new tires, four on the dollies and an extra one on the spare. All brand spanking new, same mileage, everything. Start from there, that way we're not mixing and matching and guessing what's new and what's not. When well, they got them apart, I'll get the uh, hubs re-greased. Do a full service. Okay, so now the tricky part. <clears throat> this back way is a two-lane head-on highway. I wanna make sure that I am hugging the median all the way to the inside. Anytime I come up on another vehicle. Man, look at that rim. I might even upgrade to 5.7s D-rated. That's a freaking highway patrolman. I was like, that car's hauling ass. He's, oh, he's, that guy's pulling that truck over. He's going somewhere quick. Wow. Cops getting on it. Here comes another one. Truck's kicked out to the side. Right about there. My tire's rolling just inside my that inside double lane. So keep it just like this, nice and even. All the way back to the yard. <sighs> Equipment failure. It's never fun. It's always time consuming. But two o'clock in the morning, you know, what are you gonna do? I'm able to keep rolling. All right, we've got this one that I uh, dropped a tracking device on early this morning when I was heading back in with that uh, black Dodge. That was a nightmare to get back to my impound yard. I blew the dollies twice, one on each side. Ended up having to pull it back, and hugging the road, and that, that it was as difficult as all hell. When I got back into uh, the nearest gas station to my lot. My truck overheated, I have no idea why. <clears throat> Just puked all the freaking antifreeze out and I had to top that off. There was antifreeze all over the side of my truck and the, the repo, so it must have been happening while I was cruising down the freeway. Luckily, I caught it in time and was able to get it to topped off without doing any damage to the truck. 
but uh, it just seemed like anything that could go wrong last night after I repossessed that black Dodge did. It was just one of those ones where by the time you get it off your truck, you're glad to have it off your truck. While I was unloading it, uh, because the wheels were cranked so hard and I was trying to get it pitched into my yard in a funny position, the bumper came in contact with my new dolly rails and uh, ripped them to shreds on the, on the steel side, bent the metal, twisted it to freaking heck. Pieces laying on the floor over there. I can't reach it where I'm at because I'm driving, but I'd show you. I don't have to take that in tomorrow. I have my buddy weld a, a, a reinforcement plate where it ripped the metal, get it all straightened back up, repaint it black, get it mounted back down. It's like <laughs> anything that could have gone wrong did. Well, not anything, but quite a number of things. It was one of those ones that by the time I got off the back of my truck, I was just like, good freaking riddance, you know? It's amazing how just not having the key and being able to turn the wheel straight, how much trouble that can cause. Everything that happened was because of the fact that the wheels were cranked hard the way they were. And, you know, the more I thought about it, the way that guy was parked on that street, there was no reason for his wheels to be turned. You know, if you're turning into a driveway and that's the last maneuver you were doing, it makes sense for your wheels to be turned a certain way. It shows the direction of travel as you pulled in and stopped. But when you pull up to a curb and you're going straight, your wheels, and all, for all intents and purposes, should be straight. And his weren't. His were cranked hard one way, which, being that he's an ex-repo guy, uh, tells me that he knew that there was a possibility. I mean, for one, we knew he was hiding it in the garage, so he knew that it was coming. And even though he was in a neighborhood where there's no reason why we should be able to find him there, minus my tracking device, and I guarantee you he's still scratching his head today trying to figure out how the heck we located him there. He has to have thought that he was followed or something, but anyhow, by not having the key to straighten the wheels out and have the tow truck, truck, truck tow straight behind me, it caused me to have to put the dollies on, which subsequently caused the failure of the tires. I mean, the tires were obviously at the point where they were getting near failure anyways. That truck was just heavy enough to speed the process up, which is good, I mean, in, in one sense, because nothing catastrophic happened and now, you know, I'll go in tomorrow, I'll get four new tires and I can have the peace of mind that uh, it's going to be a while before I should need tires again. But it's just one of those things where it's like that one thing, not having the key, caused so many problems. When I got back to my yard, if I'd had a key, I would have dropped the truck and driven it in and parked it because it was so large. Whereas I had to try to use my truck to maneuver it in there while using my truck to maneuver it in there caused more damage to my truck, you know, and just it's one of those things where you just you can sit back and have this conversation with yourself and you realize that so many people ask me all the time, you know, why do you take the time to stop and make contact and let people get their personal property out of their vehicle and get a key? You know, it's like you know, all these people guys are just like hook and book. Well, you know, those guys are drivers for large companies, and all they have to do is pick the car up, take it to a lot, drop it in the middle of the yard. They don't care where it's dropped. They don't, you know, they stack them left, right, up, down. It's a mess in some yards. And then they have a lot person that comes in the next day and organizes the yard for them. And those, those drivers take for granted that part of the job. Well, I don't have that luxury. I'm the, an owner-operator, and I'm also the guy that gets to freaking park everything and make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And so... You know, it's easy to judge and say, hey, why don't you just hook and book and forget about contact and keys. And contact and keys is, is important, for one. It allows us to extrapolate more information from the people, tons of information that we couldn't get otherwise in case it comes up for repo again. Two, shows respect, lets them get their personal property out. People always appreciate that, and that's a side of this job that I try to keep real. And uh, it's important to me to run my business that way and to know that when I go home at night and lay my head down on a pillow that... I can say I did everything I could to be uh, legitimate with people today and to, to do a hard job, but to do it in such a way that I didn't have to be uh, a bonehead about it, you know? And there's going to be the ones that there's just no way around it. We have to hook and book for safety reasons. You know, there's just no, no sense in trying to make contact with certain types of people or with accounts where we have a history and we know there's a high probability that there's going to be a major conflict beyond just people being upset. I can deal with people being mad and upset, but people don't want to get violent or grab weapons and stuff. There's just no reason to hang around and deal with that kind of crap if, if you don't have to. It happens frequently enough as it is on its own. I don't need to be doing it myself. And third and foremost, I get a key. It makes it 
easier for the finance company to not have to call out a locksmith and have a key made. It makes it easier for me to park, lock up, and secure the vehicle. If I need to move the vehicle around in my yard because I have more inventory coming in and I want to stack them different ways, having keys on running vehicles just makes sense. And, uh, you know, last night, I mean, there was nothing I could do about it. Last night, I wasn't going to make contact with that guy, and I had no idea which house he was parked at, so it was what it was for that assignment. But, boy, by not having the key, I really had it reminded to me what a pain in the butt it is.